Okay, let's talk about the O-R-E-L-A, Middle Grades Math Test, and this is the code to it. It's the NES203 code. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you are um, striving to become a middle school math teacher in the state of Oregon. So welcome, and what we're going to do here is take a look at a quick uh, practice problem that hopefully you won't have any difficulty with. Uh, before we get started, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math, and I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. So I know what it's like to take these certification exams. And uh, even, uh, you know, for myself, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree. But even with those levels of qualifications, uh, when you're going for, let's say, your high school uh, math certification, you have to know a lot of math, okay? You have to know more math than you, I think sometimes people think they have to for the grade level they're teaching. So I've taught both uh, high school and middle school, and the middle school or the middle grades math exam they're going to be taking here has a considerable amount of math. I, I think I would kind of characterize it as advanced high school level mathematics. So, you know, definitely you're going to have to be very strong in algebra, geometry, and know a lot of uh, topics. So you always have to know more than what you're going to be teaching as a uh, math teacher. But uh, with that being said, let me just say that you don't want to go into these exams um, not prepared. So <laughs> people do fail these exams. So even if you're strong in math, I assume that you already are or you wouldn't be striving to become a math teacher, you're going to have to put the work in um, and really be up to speed on all your uh you know, math knowledge and skills, and that would be a, a good amount of things. So you can take a look at what's on. You can go to the uh, Oregon uh, Education website. You can see specifically what's on this test. But um, I actually have a test prep course, very comprehensive. I think that would really be beneficial for you. I'm going to leave the link uh, to that description for this particular exam. So uh, we'll talk about uh, that uh, later, a little bit more later. But let's get into this practice prom. This is something that you definitely should be able to handle um, if you expect to do pretty well on this test. Now, if you get this problem right, that's by no means an indication that you're you're set for this exam. But if you get it wrong, that's definitely kind of a red flag that you you know you have some work to do. So here is the problem. So it's a quick sketch, not the most. Uh, uh, perfect, pretty <laughs> sketch, but this is something you might draw on your whiteboard or chalkboard. So I have a graph. You see, got some lines down here. Okay, that should tell you uh, kind of what's going on with this graph. And what I want to know is, does this graph represent a function or not? Okay, so is this a function? That's the first question. And if it is a function, how would you describe the range? Uh, and domain. So I want to know the domain and range of this function, okay, if in fact this graph represents a function, all right? And I'd like you to um, uh, go ahead and define that using uh, interval notation, domain and range, or if you kind of forgot how to do that, just do it the best way you can. Okay, so um, I would suggest that you pause the video, think about it, and even if you don't know exactly what to do, at least think about it a little bit, okay? Okay, so hopefully you conquer this problem, and no big deal if you didn't get it right or you're not quite sure what to do. I will say this much. This is a problem that has to do with uh, the concept or topic of functions, which is absolutely massive <laughs> in mathematics. The, the topic of functions is everywhere, and you really, really have to know a lot about functions. It's one of the things that, you know, um, kind of start teaching students in middle school, probably even earlier than that, but definitely in middle school, pre-algebra uh, level math. It's kind of like eighth grade level, so they're kind of ready for like your algebra one, ninth grade. So you'll be teaching the concepts of functions if you're teaching middle school math. But let's get into the problem. So the first question is, is this a function or not? Yes or no? And it is a function, okay? Now, how can I... Um, answer that question definitively. Well, let's take a look at what's going on. First of all, I have this graph and these little dotted lines here kind of indicate a border, right? We call those uh, an asymptote. In other words, this graph is going to be kind of a channel or channeled in between this line and this line. In other words, it's not going to touch it. 
Um, it's just going to approach it very, very closely. Okay, so this is the idea of an asymptote. So knowing that, that this is pretty much the general shape of this graph, I can see that it's going to pass the vertical line test. So if you're not familiar with the vertical line test, it's an excellent graphical test uh, to t um, basically that we can apply with graphs to see if they're a function. Okay, so you should definitely should know what a vertical, uh, what the vertical line test is. And the idea is if I draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph, it only, sec uh, only intersects one time, okay? It doesn't intersect twice. So for example, if I had like a circle, okay, and I draw a vertical line through that circle, it's crossing through twice. A circle is not a function, okay? So what would a circle be? Just kind of a little uh, bonus pop question. So if it's not a function, it is a, starts with an R, or a relation, okay? So the idea, when we're talking about relations, okay, in mathematics, some relations are functions, not all functions are relations, all right? Now again, you really, really want to um, know a lot about functions, but I don't want to go off on a tangent and go deeper than I need to with this particular problem. But that doesn't mean that you, you know, shouldn't, uh, you know, study functions at that level amongst other things. Okay. So back to the problem. So it is a vertical line test. Uh, I mean, sorry, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Very easy. And if you um, answer the question, yes, that it is a function, I'd be interesting, uh, interested to know what is your, um, your uh, validation for that, okay? What's your reasoning? Just can't guess, okay? So if you said function, but you're not quite sure why, and it was a guess, that's not good enough, right? You gotta know why you're answering something appropriately in math. Okay, so let's get to the second half of this question. And that is, what is the domain and range? Okay, what is the domain and range of this function? So let's start off with the domain. Now the domain is all our inputs and it's associated with all the x values. Okay, now this it can really we can really kind of um, spend a lot of time with this topic. Let's just take a point right right here on the graph. Okay, that's some x y point or maybe this point down here. That's some x y point. So all the points that are on this graph make up the entire uh, set that's going to be in the domain and range, okay? Now, if you recall, your x values are um, the domain, okay? These are the values that are gonna be in our domain. And if we just look here, you can see that all x values, okay, both positive and negative, including zero, are going to be uh, on this graph. You kind of, it's, you know, kind of like the width of the graph when you're looking at the x-axis. So the domain, Okay, is going to be all real numbers. So I can just kind of write it like this. Okay, now I did ask you to write this in a set interval or interval notation. So one way I could write that is open parentheses, negative infinity to positive infinity, and with open parentheses there. Okay, so hopefully this notation is, uh, you know, you're familiar with it. And if you're not, you should be. Okay, so basically, in other words, you're going from negative infinity to positive infinity and everything else in between, okay? All right, so that is the domain. Now let's talk about the range, the range, okay? Now we associate, remember, the domain with the x uh, values or the x uh, uh, axis. So the domain is going to be our y value. So it's a little bit trickier here, right? So this graph is kind of channeled between four and negative five on the y axis. Okay, so it's going from four to negative five, but it's not touching four or negative five. Okay, so it's getting very, very, very close to it. All right, so these lines here again are um, kind of defining our asymptotes or our borders to this particular function. Okay, so the values that are gonna be in the range are going to be from here all the way down to here, right? So they're gonna be going from negative five to four, four to uh, negative five. So various ways you can write this, okay? Now I'll, I'll write it in, uh, in this manner. Matter of fact, let's do that now. Okay, so 
we can go from four, or let's say negative five, open parentheses to uh, four, both open parentheses. Remember, when you write uh, a uh, bracket like so, that means it also includes that value. Okay, so it's not touching four or negative five, so we're gonna uh, use the open parentheses. But you can write the range in this way, okay? It'll all be all Y values, uh, less, than, um, less than four, and greater than negative five. Okay, that's another way to write uh, the range. And you can use that same notation for the domain as well. So, <clears throat> um, again, this is something that you should be pretty comfortable with. All right. Now, are you going to be teaching functions, uh, the concept of functions at this level in middle school? Very, very, it's very highly uh, unlikely that you're not. Okay. Uh, maybe to maybe some of your advanced students in Algebra 1. And you could definitely be teaching Algebra 1 in middle school. That's, uh, you know, something that's more and more common. Okay, so you could have your more accelerated students, and they kind of get into some of this. So, but on um, on average, for sure, you're not going to get this deep into uh, the topic of functions in middle school. All right, so hopefully, uh, you know, this was helpful. Again, it's just one problem on a very, very important topic, but something that if you didn't get right, you know, um, use it, you know, use the feedback appropriately. So let's go and wrap this up. Um, I've been on YouTube for, oh, now, geez, it's over 12 years, I think. Uh, and uh, it's one of my passions. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you find my videos uh, helpful. I already have hundreds and hundreds of math videos I think will help you out. If you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, is this your first time taking this test? Are you coming from elementary level, maybe going to middle school level, and that's why you're taking this particular exam? Um, just kind of any feedback, was good feedback. I always enjoy to try to uh, read as much uh, feedback about fellow teachers, and, and you are my, you know, um, peer, okay? So I know what it's like, even though I haven't taught in Oregon, you know, teachers, you know, throughout the United States, we all have to go through certification exams. That's only this, you know, beyond after getting your degree and all your other educational stuff. And then you get into the classroom and you really find out what it's like being a teacher when you have real life students in front of you. Of course, now with so much remote distance learning happening, you know, it's difficult. But one day uh, we will all be back in the classroom again. Okay, so with that being said, I'll leave you with a reminder that I have an excellent um, prep course for this particular exam, and I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. But uh, I'll leave you this one last piece of advice, okay? I'm being extra, extra redundant. Do not underestimate these tests, okay? You really have to study hard. It's over, by the mere fact that you're going for your, your middle, uh, your middle grades uh, math, you know, certification, you like math, you're good in math, okay, but that's not enough, okay, you really have to be up to speed, do a lot, a lot of practice, that way you can just go ahead and take this exam and get, get it done the first time out. All right, so I wish you all the best in your teaching career, thank you for your time, and have a great day.